Hello, and today we're going to look at Spirit Island, a game by Greater Than Games. Now on opening up the box, uh, obviously you'll notice this is a pre-punched copy. So we've got the little discs, which are the influence markers for the spirits. Uh, some little cardboard tokens, which represent uh, like temporary powers of the spirits. You've got fear tokens. You've got a terror level tracker. Uh, so you start on level 1, you progress to level 2 and then level 3. That makes the game a bit easier for you. You've got this little build thing for the English or um, I think the Spanish is the other faction, but you'll notice this is English on both sides. You've then got your island, which unfortunately I find this quite ugly, but from a gameplay point of view it makes it you know, easy to scan and see what terrain is. So this is a mountain, sand, forest and wetland if I remember correctly and then with a C but you can also play on a slightly more thematic one so I think this is the sand this is the mountain this is the forest and is this the sea and one of these is the wetland as you can see it's a lot harder to work out what's going on there and there's four of these which you can place in various uh, styles um, so let's just see if I can set up a connection over off camera here somewhere yeah so for example um i've locked these two islands together here so they just click together and so there is a little bit of fiddliness in setting up your play board then underneath here we've got the rather nice rule book and then i don't know about this insert in some ways it's great but it takes up a lot of space and i am wondering about ditching it for a 3d printed equivalent now what we got in here are some power tokens, the native islanders, the Dahan, these little huts here. We've then got what's known as blight tokens, which are quite nice little parts. And that's where the explorers have mucked up the island. So the explorers are sort of Spanish conquistadors. So that's your explorer. Then you've got a little village that can take, uh, if I remember correctly, two hits. Explorers can only take one hit and then your cities, which take three damage. And then this little insert lifts out. Now underneath that, you've got your power cards, some reference cards, fear cards, and player boards. So for example, you could be a spread of rampant green, bringer of dreams and nightmares, ocean's hungry grasp, river surges in sunlight, Shadows flicker like flame. The slightly human looking thunder speaker. Lightning swift strike. And then finally, oh, if I can get it out, this is the other problem with this insert. I'm having trouble. Anyway, vital strength of earth. Well, having got everything out, um, you can then see underneath there are these little level one, two, and three exploration tiles. So this says that someone's going to explore in water, for example. You've then got a little board for keeping track of your terror level, your blight, and your fear. And then right at the bottom here are, I believe, some scenario cards which uh, allow you to mix up how the game actually works. So there's quite a lot in this box here. Um, so as I say, scenario goes there. Then you drop on the little board, these little cards go back in here and then your player boards drop in on top of this bit here and then your cards go in there anyway let's just quickly lay out the board so i've set out the sort of play board here so as you can see um if you reveal this you have instant victory because this is where all your fear guard fear cards go so you shuffle them up put them here they then when you earn them move to here you then reveal them and discard them having uh, use them to earn fear you place fear tokens up here and you got so many per player which is four if i remember correctly when you earn them they go here once you've got enough fear they go back up there and you claim a fear card the game starts at terror level one you can then upgrade to level two then level three blight where you have five tokens per player and then down here you've got your little exploration deck in phase one two and three so people will explore then they will build then they will ravish and then um you know the card goes and there's a little summary 
here of what happens. So you get the spirit phase, the fast action, the explorers or invaders, uh, the slow phase, and then time passes. And, and that's basically a round. Now that's the sort of board that goes to one side. Then of course you have your little island here where you're going to put on your little disc. So for example, uh, let's see, let's get this bag open. Uh, and let's say I'm the purple player. So I might say I'm influencing this area here. Then a bit later on, I might choose to spread my influence to over here. And that's how I sort of move around and can do my thing. Uh, but also you are going to place your little Dahan villagers. So you might have one there, two there. And then maybe when I place my influence there, I get the option to add a Dahan which means that area gets better defended, etc. But in the meantime, uh, invaders might come along. So they might come into here and they might then blight this land. And then they might then choose to build, let's say, a city. Uh, I put a temporary disc in there and destroy the village and the explorer, but the city remains, for example. Um, and then they might blight it again. And that could give me problems. And so that's sort of the, the flow of the game. What you're trying to do as a spirit is you're trying to spread your influence, keep the Dahan um, around and destroy the explorers. Now, I've got a feeling um, the fear cards can really make or break your game because they can have some really powerful effects. So let's have a quick look at some of those. So here we've got an example fear card, uh, avoid the Dahan. So at level one, level two and level three, you get a different effect. So level one, Invaders do not explore into the lands with at least two Dahan. At level two, invaders do not build in lands where the amount of Dahan outnumber the cities and villages of the explorers, or invaders I should call them. And invaders do not build in lands with Dahan. So as the fear level goes up, the cards get more and more powerful. Uh, another one here, each player removes an explorer from a coastal land. Each player removes an explorer or, or a um, village from a coastal land. Each player removes... Uh, explorer or village from any land so it can get more and more effective you've also got decks for the spirits so each spirit gets their own set of little powers so for example if we flip this one here this one here it costs zero power it uses these symbols and it's cool of the deeps it's fast with a range of zero so you have to actually cast it on an area where you have one of your little discs it will only target coastal so it will gather an explorer to that area and if the target land is the ocean you may gather another explorer so that's quite a nice little ability this one costs one gives you a different set of symbols it's also fast it has a range of one it will create two fear and defend that area for four and as you can see there are some other cards so these are unique to your particular power but you've also got minor and major powers as well which you can add to your hand which will include these so as you can see uh, you have two decks minor and ma major power so for example this minor power is elemental boon costs you one energy it's got all these various effects this is a fast with range of nothing target any uh, oh, I'm going to have to double check what that means. Uh, any three people. Target spirit gains three different elements of their choices. If you target another spirit, you also gain the chosen element. So obviously, it's best to cast this on someone else because you both then get the benefits of the element. So you can pick any of these elements here. And the elements are useful because if you actually look at the spirit boards, you'll notice that you've got some innate powers. So if you've got one sun, two mountain, and two... Um, green which I can't remember the names once this turn target spirit may repeat one power card with energy costs of one or less so that's quite nice but a bit higher power instead the energy cost is limited to six or less so yeah that could be quite nice uh, but if we were to pick for example let's say thunder speaker and give them um, for example purple this power may be fast so they will actually be able to upgrade a slow power to a fast power which is useful because fast powers happen before the invaders, slow powers happen after. Let's have a look at a different card then. So Visions of Fiery Doom gives you these two symbols. It's fast, range zero, target any land, 
create a fear and push an explorer or village and if you have these symbols so two fire you get plus one fear so that's quite nice so that's your minor powers and obviously they're pretty good but you've also got your major powers here so let's have a look at this one here vigor of break and dawn it's a bit more expensive costs you three energy gives you uh, sun and strike i think that is or claws anyway uh, speed is good range of two target any land with a dahan in two damage per dahan in target land and if you have these symbols you may push up to two dahan in lands that you pushed dahan to you get two damage per dahan so that's pretty neat let's just quickly jump to another one dissolve the bonds of kinship costs four it's got three different symbols it's a slow one with a range of one target in any land and replace a um, city with two explorers replace a village with one explorer replace a daham with one explorer push all from target land to as many different lands as possible and if you have these extra symbols before push in do damage so they actually fight each other so that's pretty good now that is a, an aspect of the game i haven't really talked about is the daham when they're on the space here will have a, a certain amount of attack and defense as will the explorers and they fight it out and obviously you don't want to lose your Daham uh, and you want to get rid of all the invaders because as you can see at Terra level 1 if you get rid of all invaders off the board you win as you go up in the Terra levels that gets easier so that's pretty much it the only bit I haven't spoken about really is here when you explore so water will be the area where um, your invaders will go that will then move across so having explored water they will then be wanting to build but they're also then going to be exploring jungle they will then try and ravish the jungle sorry ravish the water whilst uh, building in the jungle whilst exploring the mountains and then so on and so forth on and on it goes so you get a bit of a advanced warning of what's happening uh, in the game and what's coming up so you can plan and it's basically a game where um, things just keep coming at you you feel like you're going to lose and then suddenly uh, you can win I also like the sort of eclipse like uh, mechanism where you have discs here as you take them off here to put them up onto your island board um, you can reveal symbols power or card draw however um, this guy has a slightly different set of abilities as do the other powers um, in the growth phase you get to pick an ability at the top uh, you've got different innate powers and then on the back of the cards uh, you've got a summary of their powers how complex they are how to set them up how to play them and a little sort of bit of flavor text really really nice and you've got quite a few powers built into the box but there's also a promo and an expansion that helps the game grow and what's really good about this game is normally um, you know you're a European who goes out and conquers the world well this game takes it from the other point of view and it's you know you are the defenders of you know a civilization that's been attacked by the European explorers and it's interesting that you do it quite a lot with like fear and uh, active resistance and of course one of the big problems is the Europeans are coming and they're blighting your paradise island and I really like that it's a really nice little um, flip of your normal setup and then of course you've also got the scenario cards you've got um, for example the English here that um, if I remember correctly they go on here so you go explore build ravage build discard which is pretty horrible um, so yeah nice little uh, mix up there's also little cardboard chips as well that allow you to do various bits and pieces um, for the different types of explorers I think there are some fang created explorers for example to be swedish invaders and stuff like that and so it's really really well supported and there was a recent kickstarter which i believe will finally be published next year for another expansion uh, which will give you even more uh, options for this game and as you can see there's quite a lot sort of going on but in actual gameplay uh, it's fairly simple you know you you, you, you use your powers you place your guys to try and defend against what's going on here and hopefully you can actually either get fear victory or terror victory and to drive away the uh, islanders and of course you know by picking your power you're going to have a very different game because each one has its own power cards 
but also its own power board with different bits and a different scaling on energy and card draw. So it's really cool. Um, so anyway, all of them have a reclaim cards ability, so you, you don't run out of cards. Almost all of them have some sort of card draw and add in presence and gain in energy, but the exact mix is different. So as you can see there, if we compare it to the one underneath, when you reclaim guards, you can add two presents, whereas here, reclaim guards, gain two power cards, gain a power card, add a presence. This one, do stuff with Dahan. This one, add a presence, get two energy. This one, add a presence, get four energy. So just, just there is different, and then there's other bits there. So I guess uh, if you learn to play with this guy and then suddenly switch to, to this person, yeah, you're, you're suddenly going to have to slightly reset your expectations. That's good. That's going to give the game some longevity. It plays one to four players, so great. And it is a full co-op. So really looking forward to giving this one uh, back to the table. And I'm going to need to reread the rules because um, my memory of them has gone a little bit rusty. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that quick look at Spirit Island and um, expect some more videos when the expansion and promos and Kickstarter stuff all comes in.